日本史学習に最高にもってこいのサイトサムライアーカイブスポッドキャストへようこそ美しい自然にあふれてる縄文時代から波乱万丈な幕末まで全時代を網羅して日本史の隅から隅まで一緒に語り合いましょうでは早速日本史の世界へはい。Don't forget to check out patreon.com slash samurai archives to see how you can support the podcast and what we can do for you. I shouldn't have to tell you, but there's a constant stream of content over there, so if you are a fan of Japanese history, check it out. And all the support is greatly appreciated. Also, if you're up for it, please rate and if you have an extra 40 seconds after that, review the podcast on iTunes. It helps bump us up in the rankings. Right now, we tend to hang around. I don't know, about 190 in the USA for history between episodes, and for the first few days after episodes, we're usually around 120. And I'm not going to lie, I think a lot of it has to do with that mountain of true crime podcasts that dominate the history list. So help us fight back and put history back in history on the iTunes rankings. Again, by rating and possibly reviewing the podcast. But hey, on the bright side, we've been in the top 20 in Luxembourg and Macedonia for the past couple months. So. Shout out to Luxembourg and Macedonia. Look at you guys. I mean, the combined population is probably like 27 people, but hey, thanks for the support. Oh, and、uh, oh, hey, look at that. We're also consistently in the top 10 in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And I have no idea where or what that is, but hey, you guys obviously rock. Kind of sounds like the name of a band from the 1950s. And since this is now 2020, and I, I usually don't mention the date on these podcasts just to kind of, I don't know. Not date them, I guess, but、uh, just out of curiosity, I browsed through the history section. And this particular podcast is actually one of the oldest history podcasts on the list. We started back in、uh, 2011. We actually recorded our first trial episode in、uh, 2010, but that episode never got released because it was,、uh, well, for one thing, the audio was terrible. And I'm talking like more terrible than the typical old episodes.、Uh, it was an empty room with、uh, flat walls, so a lot of echoing, a lot of static. I don't even remember what we were talking about actually, but I think it was like an hour long. So I will probably release that on Patreon here at some point. So, hey, another reason to check out Patreon. And that episode was actually me and the now doctor, Joseph Ryan, who at that point I think was just a grad student. And I think、uh, Travis actually made a、uh, cameo in that as well. But anyway, so 2020. So we've been at this for nine years, almost, almost 10, but man, that's a long time. And that also accounts for the terrible audio the first couple of years, or the first three or four years even. Podcasting wasn't much of a thing back then, so I really had no idea how to set any of this stuff up. So I'm sure we're penalized even now for our terrible audio nine years ago when new listeners download the first couple episodes, but eh, what are you going to do? I, I toy with the idea of just removing them completely, but I've just left them up, whatever. So I don't know, I guess with all that being said, rate and review the podcast on your chosen platform and consider supporting this battered Ronin castle on Patreon. So,、uh, on with the show. So, the One Eyed Dragon Date Masumune, which, by the way, historically speaking, is objectively near the top of the list for badass samurai nicknames. However, like a lot of things in Japan, the term Dokugandu or One Eyed Dragon actually came from China, from a late Tang Dynasty warrior who would have been known in Japan at the time, the Chinese general Li Keong. Apparently, Keong had one eye smaller than the other and was possibly blind in it. And so he was known as the One Eyed Dragon. And that's actually where the term originated, and that's where Masamune's nickname originated. The samurai were big on reading the Chinese classics, so some well read Sengoku warrior probably called him One Eyed Dragon.、Uh, who knows, even as a joke or maybe to try to piss him off, I don't know. But for whatever reason, the name stuck. And in the pantheon of legendary Sengoku daimyo, I'd say he's easily in the top 10. And also, like most Sengoku daimyo, he has a pretty crazy story. And that's the story that we're diving into today. So I'll throw out the same caveat that I did with the Mori Motonari episodes. And in fact, in this episode, I'm going to expand it from caveat to straight up disclaimer. As it is with the biographies of most 
samurai 400 years ago. History and legend are blended together to the point that it would take some pretty hardcore research to tease it apart. And even then, you probably still wouldn't be sure what you've actually got. And specifically in the case of Date Masamune, there's a lot of myths and legend and conflicting information all mixed together. It's actually pretty messy. And so where sources differ, I'll do my best to blend it together into a cohesive story. So keep in mind that although as much of this as possible is historical fact, and in fact, I'm comfortable in saying that the vast majority is historical fact, but with a guy like Masamune, you have a lot of legends and mythology and really no way to confirm them. So don't be surprised if you find information in your own reading that conflicts with something that I'm giving you here. I had to do a lot of blending of information here and there to put together a cohesive narrative. Now, if this is your first time listening to the podcast, I, I took a little time to talk about what exactly a Sengoku Daimyo is in the episode on Mori Motonari. So you might want to go listen to that one first. Although I am also planning on doing an episode specifically on what is a Sengoku Daimyo going forward. So that'll be coming up at some point. But anyway, if you want a, kind of the shorter version, go listen to the first episode of the Mori Motonari podcast. But hey, if you want to just dive right in, short answer is that a Sengoku Daimyo was a land-holding warlord with a gang of vassals during Japan's Sengoku period, otherwise known as the era of the country at war, or Japan's Big Samurai Civil War, which was a stretch roughly from the 1470s to the early 17th century, depending on who you ask, and that's a whole other story. So I won't get into the weeds with this, but it was a time frame of about 100 years, give or take, and again, depending on whose definition you're using. So I'm not going to assume a massive amount of knowledge, and I'll define terms when necessary, but I'm not going to get too into the overall big picture story of what was happening across the country during Masamune's life. I'm basically going to stick to his story and the relevant events surrounding him. So don't be surprised if I throw around some Japanese names that would be familiar to anyone who has a general interest in Japanese history without a lot of exposition surrounding it. I'll just pepper it here and there, you know, so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on elsewhere, but the focus really will be on Masamune. But we also have other episodes that tackle other aspects of this period of Japanese history, so if this episode gets you curious about something mentioned, I'm almost certain we have an episode that touches on it somewhere. You know, nine years of episodes results in quite a library. And the area of Japan that we'll be dealing with in this episode was the large province of Mutsu in northern Japan. This province took up what is now four prefectures in Japan's Tohoku region. Fukushima, Miyagi, Aomori, and Iwate. Basically the entire eastern shoreline from just below the southern tip of Hokkaido to a couple hundred miles north of modern-day Tokyo, which is a distance of around 300 miles, give or take. Bordering immediately to the west of Mutsu province was Dewa province. So, now that I have the basic introduction out of the way, let's start with the Date family, or more properly, the Date clan. And again, I use those terms interchangeably. I, I, I'm pretty sure that there's some kind of, you know, academic thing with uh, clan versus family and what have you, but I'm just using them interchangeably. So, the Date clan is descended from Fujiwara no Kamatari, the 7th century founder of the Fujiwara clan. The founder of the Date was a Fujiwara descendant by the name of Nakamura Hitachinosuke, Tomomune. Tomomune was a general who fought on the side of Minamoto no Yoritomo in the 12th century. Tomomune received a grant of land in the Date district of Iwashiro province, hence the name. This is where the Date got their name from. And he also got a sword from Yoritomo for his service. And this land would pass down through the clan to the 16th century when Date Masamune takes the stage. But before we get to Masamune, we have to look at a conflict in the 1540s between Masamune's grandfather and great-grandfather that set the stage for Masamune's rise 40 years later. Masamune's great-grandfather, Tanemune, had forged an alliance with the Uesugi clan that was to be consecrated by giving his son, Sanemoto, over to the Uesugi to be adopted. And this was opposed by members of both the Date and Uesugi clans, and eventually relations between the two clans broke down, and Tanemune's other son, Harumune, who was Masamune's grandfather, took up arms against his father and went to war. This clan war was known as the Tenbun Rebellion. Tenbun refers to the Japanese era that it took place in. At first, Tanemune had the upper hand, but Harumune was able to get the Soma and Ashina clans on his side, which turned the tide in his favor, and by 1548, Tanemune was left with no other choice but to retire and give control of the Date clan over to Harumune. 
This episode left divisions in the Date clan, which weakened it for years to come, with distrust and backroom maneuvering continuing through to Masamune's father's time. Masamune's father, Terumune, was the 16th head of the Date clan, being appointed head in 1560 at 17 years old. And he was known just as much for his skill on the battlefield as for his study of literature, poetry, and the sword. He was basically a Renaissance samurai, known as very even-tempered and insightful. Apparently the arts were his first love, and as a young castle lord he confined himself to the castle composing poetry, reading and writing, and practicing the art of the sword. And he might have gone the way of many daimyo who get too into the arts at the expense of everything else. Take a look at Ouchi Yoshitaka, who was eventually overthrown and killed in a coup by Sue Harukata. But in Terumune's case, when a potential rebellion was brought to his attention, he dropped his brush and picked up his sword, so to speak. Now, this episode in Terumune's life is one of those that seems to combine legend and reality. So I actually found different versions of what happened, but the general idea came across in all sources. Word apparently reached Terumune in 1570 that a powerful and ambitious date vassal, Nakano Munetoki, was hatching a plot to have him killed because he was supposedly ignoring his duties as lord. Basically, the typical story that we see throughout the Sengoku period. A daimyo gets a little too fancy, starts quoting poetry and hosting calligraphy parties, and the generals start to get annoyed thinking their lord is getting soft. The story goes that when Terumune was notified, he wanted to have the potential traitor killed but was advised by a loyal vassal that he shouldn't move against Munetoki without finding out the full details of the purported rebellion. So Terumune set down his sword and came up with an idea. In order to get to the heart of the plot and find out who was involved, it was decided that the son of a loyal Date general would be ordered to marry the daughter of Munetoki, and he would uncover the details of the plot. So the marriage moved forward, and the spy was then let into the unsuspecting Nakano family. Unfortunately, the general's son either fell in love with his new wife and decided to side with the rebel family or was otherwise forced to go along with the plot. But regardless, he seemed to have gotten on board with the rebellion. But he did inform his father of his plans. And suffice it to say, his father was not too happy to hear about it. The general's son was able to confirm that the Nakano were the only ones who were planning to rebel, and so the general, for his part, dragged his son directly to Terumune, who had him immediately commit seppuku for his betrayal. And then Nakano Munetoki and his son Hisanaka were forced to flee. But they didn't get very far. They were intercepted at a river crossing in Katta district by the lord of Watari Castle, Watari Motomune. And most of the entourage was killed, and the rest were scattered. So Munetoki and Hisanaka were able to escape, but Munetoki would eventually die in exile. Hisanaka, on the other hand, who had been adopted into the Makino clan, eventually returned to serve Date Masamune years later. Hisanaka actually became a very loyal retainer, and by the time of his grandson, Morinaka, in the 1590s, his family would be fully redeemed. And as for Terumune, although he would continue to be a patron of the arts, he would never let it take precedence over his other duties again. So I, I kind of suspect this is a fictionalized version of events, because it's really needlessly complex. I mean, arrange a marriage to uncover a potential assassination plot? Eh, sounds kind of like a movie, but I digress. So with that, we've reached Date Masamune. So let's move on to Date Masamune himself, the man of the hour. He was the eldest son of Date Terumune, and Masamune's mother was named Yoshihime, a daughter of Mogami Yoshimori and sister to Mogami Yoshiaki. Masamune was born on the third day of the eighth month in the tenth year of Eiroku, or more simply, September 5th, 1567, at Yonezawa Castle, where his childhood name was Botenmaru. When Masamune was 11, his father Terumune wanted to officially name Masamune as heir to the clan. Masamune, even at age 11, refused, saying that he didn't believe he could do it. But his father encouraged him, and Masamune relented and was officially made the date heir. But not everyone was on board with the choice. Masamune was apparently a quiet and moody child who preferred to be alone, and he avoided the other children of the castle, and apparently this didn't win him much in the way of friends among the kids, or his vassals for that matter. But Masamune wasn't without friends. His father appointed Katakura Kagetsuna as Masamune's personal attendant, who would become a strategist and lifelong friend to Masamune. But regardless, most of the Date vassals weren't too happy with the choice of future lord. On top of the pushback from the Date vassals, he was reputed to be an unattractive child, since he was missing an eye, of course, and he was actually nearsighted in his remaining eye, so his vision was terrible. 
And so I, I guess I didn't actually get to the story of the, the one eye here. So actually, as a child, Masamune had suffered a bout with smallpox that caused an infection in his right eye, which blinded him. And apparently, or supposedly, he tore it out himself somewhere between the age of 8 and 14, although some sources say his father removed it. And interestingly enough, a lot of times you'll see contemporary paintings of Masamune with two eyes. Apparently, he preferred paintings of himself with two eyes. There, there are some, There's at least one with him with one eye, but for whatever reason, any paintings that he commissioned ended up having two eyes. So with his messed up eye and his solemn and disagreeable or maybe even melancholy demeanor, a lot of his vassals thought of him as slow and unintelligent, or just straight up unlikable. And even his mother, Yoshihime, wanted to depose him and replace him with his younger brother, Masamichi. And technically he is the younger brother, but in reality he's barely a year younger. And it's well known that Masamune's mother loved her second son, but for some reason she just didn't seem to like Masamune, and was actively trying to have him replaced as official heir. Although it does seem that later in life she seemed to have come around a bit, but uh, at least early on she just didn't like him. And some sources even seem to indicate that she even tried to have him assassinated at one point. So we really don't know how far the assassination plot actually got, but it can't be disputed that Yoshihime caused internal divisions in the clan in trying to promote Masamichi as heir. And she even gained the support of her side of the family, the Mogami clan. Yoshihime was never shy about her loyalty to the Mogami clan, as evidenced by an episode in 1568 when tensions led to Terumune attacking her brother's castle. Yoshihime apparently got in a palanquin and immediately rode out to her husband's forward position and demanded that he abandon the attack, which he did. So, unlike a lot of Sengoku wives, she never really became a part of her husband's family, and it seems to be by her choice. But, despite the apparent opposition of many vassals, and even his own mother, Masamune still had enough support behind him. The Date general who sacrificed his son to find out the details of the Nakano rebellion seems to have seen a spark in Masamune, and stood up for him against the other vassals, and with his help and that of his father's, Masamune was eventually firmly established as heir to the Date clan, despite the problems that his mother had been causing. Terumune provided Masamune with mentors and educators, notably including Katakura Kita, who was Katakura Kagetsuna and Oniniwa Tsunemoto's half-sister. Oniniwa Tsunemoto, by the way, was a loyal friend to Masamune and was about 18 years older than him. But also, interesting side note, the longest-lived Date retainer of the period. He'd go on to live long into the Edo period, dying at the old age of 91 years old, outliving all of his contemporaries. But back to Katakura Kita. She was actually a bit of an anomaly herself. She was never married. Instead of finding a husband or becoming another marriage pawn, as was normal for the Sengoku, she dedicated herself to the martial arts and strategy and would take care of and mentor Masamune and Kagetsuna and would be present throughout Masamune's life as a political advisor. Kita would also shield Masamune from the plotting of his mother. Really, Kita raised Masamune and was more of a mother to him than his actual biological mother. Another side note, even though Kagetsuna and Tsunemoto were half-brothers to Kita, they themselves weren't actually related. Kagetsuna and Kita shared their mother, and Tsunemoto and Kita shared the father. So, moving on, Masamune received the name Tojiro in 1578, and the next year an alliance was arranged between the Date and Tamura Kiyoaki of Miharu Castle. The alliance was to be cemented between the clans with the marriage of Masamune to Kiyoaki's daughter Megohime. Many of the Date vassals were against this alliance because Tamura was an enemy of some Date clan allies, but Terumune spoke on behalf of the alliance, saying that Tamura would make a strong ally, and so the marriage went through. And so with the support of the Date clan, Tamura Kiyoaki was able to get much-needed support against the Ashina and Satake clans, which had been making aggressive moves against him. And so Masamune was now married at the ripe old age of 12 years old. Three years later, in 1581, the Soma clan rebelled against the Date in the early winter. Terumune brought his generals together for a war council, and it was decided that the rebellion could wait until after the winter snows, as the Soma was not considered much of a threat. So a few months later, in the first month of the new year, Terumune called his generals together again and assembled his army. Date sources say that the army was 48,000 strong, but that's highly unlikely, considering the information we have on other Date battles of the time. But suffice it to say, it was a large enough army that Terumune and his generals considered victory a foregone conclusion. Before he departed, Terumune threw a party and hosted a great feast for his vassals. During the feast, Masamune requested to accompany his father on the campaign, 
But one of the generals present spoke up and said he didn't believe Masamune was yet old enough to accompany his father to battle, and instead recommended that he stay at the castle, and Terumune actually agreed. So Masamune was stuck at home while his father marched off to battle. At least according to some sources. Other sources say that this was in fact Masamune's first battle. I didn't find anything specific in regards to Masamune's actual involvement in the battle, but I did find a story about how, when Masamune was forced to sit out the battle in Yonezawa Castle, the young lord gathered a small entourage together and went to a nearby temple dedicated to Hachiman, the god of war, and offered a horse, a sword, and some gold to the temple as offering, as well as gifts for the monks, and prayed to Hachiman for his father's success. And apparently it worked, because the Date clan soundly defeated the Soma clan. Apparently it was such a success that Tokugawa Ieyasu himself somehow received word of this victory and was prompted to contact Terumune personally to congratulate him on his victory, and actually requested a falcon from the Date, as the Date falcons apparently had a very good reputation, and Ieyasu was an avid falconer. Terumune had a falcon sent to Ias, and some pleasantries were exchanged, but that was about the extent of it. Like I mentioned, other sources say that Masamune's first battle was actually against the Soma, so there might have been more than one battle. It's really not clear. But one source states that during his first battle against the Soma clan, but one source states that during his first battle, which was against the Soma clan, Masamune found himself surrounded and outnumbered by the enemy, and was almost killed. But his loyal friend Katakura Kagetsuna, who I mentioned earlier, yelled out something along the lines of, I am Masamune, take my head if you can, and distracted the enemy long enough for Masamune to escape. Fortunately, Kagetsuna also got away. In any event, the Soma were defeated. Later in that year, Oda Nobunaga would be killed by his retainer Akechi Mitsuhide, who was then in turn killed by Toyotomi Hideyoshi. Once Hideyoshi consolidated his hold on power, Terumune proactively sent a letter to Hideyoshi pledging his support. So I think you can see that, despite being isolated way off in the north, Terumune was sure to keep the Date involved in national affairs. And this is something that Masamune would continue to do as Lord of the Date later on. Terumune retired a few years later on the 28th day of the ninth month of the 12th year of Tensho, or October 21st, 1584, and this put control of the Date clan squarely in Masamune's teenage hands. To his credit, Masamune was worried about his ability to lead the clan and talked with his father about his fears. The world is in disorder, and the strong man eats the weak, and the great man kills the small. I seriously doubt my ability to fill the place of so wise a man as yourself. The heads of neighboring provinces will make some pretext since there's none in reality, and will rise up against me, and will despise me, and I do not have your wisdom to check them. I beg you not lay aside your burden yet a while but wait until I'm more experienced before putting this responsibility on me. His father, for his part, encouraged the young Masamune and pledged his assistance in all matters. The same month that Masamune was established as head of the Date clan, Ashina Moritaka, head of the powerful Ashina clan centered in Kurokawa Castle in Aizu, was assassinated by disgruntled vassals, leaving his infant son Kameomaru the nominal heir. Now the timeline here isn't very clear, but Terumune at some point had negotiated with Ashina Moriuji, Moritaka's adoptive father, and had worked out a plan for Masamune's younger brother Masamichi to serve him when he came of age, and apparently with the death of Moritaka, it was worked out that he would eventually take over as head of the Ashina clan. Except we'll need to actually put a pin in that and come back to it next episode because things actually didn't work out as planned. So just keep that part in mind there. But around this time, Ouchi Saratsuna, a Date ally, rebelled and declared for the Ashina clan. Saratsuna was an independent lord holding Obama Castle in Mutsu province who had only recently sworn fealty to the Date, having fought with them against the Soma clan. But after a few months, Saratsuna sent word to Masamune that his defection to the Ashina had been a mistake and he wished to return to the Date clan. And this set off a chain of events that would eventually change Masamune's life forever. Masamune and his father suspected some sort of treachery and wanted Saratsuna where they could watch him. So Masamune summoned Saratsuna to Yonezawa Castle. When Saratsuna arrived, Masamune met with him personally and offered him lordship of a castle. But Saratsuna declined, saying that he wasn't fit for such a post and asked to be allowed to return to his family at Obama Castle. Apparently Saratsuna had actually returned to the Date in order to spy, which Masamune confirmed via some extensive counterintelligence. And once the situation was clear, Masamune called for action and started to prepare for war. 
However, Terumune cautioned Masamune against jumping headlong into war with Aizu because the Ashina had a lot of allies, and it would be too much for the Date to handle. So it was decided to send envoys to Saratsuna to broker a peace. Suffice it to say, the meeting didn't go well. Saratsuna's representatives insulted Masamune and his father, saying, The son of a weak man is also weak. Terumune and his son are weak. The rat should stay in his place before he gets eaten by the cat. So, talks broke down. But Masamune couldn't bring war to Saratsuna without getting the Ashina clan involved. So instead, he started a disinformation campaign, seeding spies around Aizu, spreading rumors and bribing Saratsuna's allies, and sent emissaries to the Ashina clan to turn them against Saratsuna all in an effort to isolate Saratsuna from his allies so he could be taken out. And it seems to have worked quite well. Saratsuna requested help from his allies in the Ashina clan by way of Ashina Moritaka's widow, but none was forthcoming, probably because of the upheaval in the Ashina clan due to the assassination, along with all of the disinformation put out by Masamune. By late 1585, Saratsuna's allies had almost completely abandoned him, and Masamune and his father-in-law, Kiyoaki, attacked Otemori Castle, a satellite castle of Obama Castle, and engaged in a slaughter, killing 800 men, women, and children. When word of this reached Saratsuna, knowing what was in store for him, he burned Obama Castle and ran. He initially took refuge with Hatakeyama Yoshitsugu at Nihonmatsu Castle, as his daughter was married to Yoshitsugu's son. And as a quick aside, Hatakeyama Yoshitsugu was also known as Nihonmatsu Yoshitsugu, and these two names seem to be interchangeable, but he was part of the Hatakeyama clan. Because the Hatakeyama were harboring Saratsuna, tensions between the Date and the Hatakeyama began to flare. Masamune invaded the Hatakeyama lands, and when it became apparent that Yoshitsugu didn't want to fight, Masamune began brazenly annexing Hatakeyama lands while Yoshitsugu sat helplessly in his castle at Nihonmatsu. By this time, Masamune had gobbled up the Hatakayama lands, attacking Yoshitsugu's holdings and that of his vassals, until they were basically left with just the Nihonmatsu area. And this seriously reduced Yoshitsugu's standing as an independent daimyo. Basically, his ability to support and reward his vassals was severely curtailed, leaving Yoshitsugu in a pretty untenable position. And although Yoshitsugu requested help from the Ashina clan, he was also unable to secure any assistance. So Yoshitsugu pursued at this point what was really his only option. He abandoned the Ashina clan and sued for peace with Masamune. Masamune, for his part, really wanted none of it, and refused Yoshitsugu's pleas for a truce multiple times. You really get the image of Masamune as an aggressive and hot-headed warrior, which actually seems to contrast him pretty clearly with his father, who was a lot calmer and more measured. And so it was Terumune who finally talked Masamune into brokering a peace with Yoshitsugu. The peace talks were mediated by Masamune's father and his great-uncle, Date Sanemoto, at a feast hosted at Miyamori Castle, and eventually a treaty was hammered out to the satisfaction of Yoshitsugu and the Date. Or, at least so the Date thought. Now, although we know generally what happened next, the actual motivations and some of what was really going on is unclear. But a few days later, Yoshitsugu and his men visited Terumune ostensibly to thank him for his mediation of the hostilities and the enjoyable dinner while Masamune was out falconing. However, possibly because Yoshitsugu still didn't trust Masamune, as Terumune walked him to the castle gate, Yoshitsugu took Terumune hostage at sword point and fled on horseback for Nihonmatsu Castle. According to some first-hand accounts of the event, Terumune's brother Lusu Masakage and his 17-year-old cousin Date Shigezane, who were in attendance at the visit but didn't follow Terumune to the gate, witnessed the kidnapping and immediately sent a messenger off to Masamune and quickly put together a posse to chase them down. The posse finally caught up with the kidnappers on the border of Nihonmatsu at the Abukuma River. A standoff resulted with Yoshitsugu's men holding swords to Terumune while the Date men covered them with gunners and bows. So they were stuck in a Mexican standoff. The Hatakeyama men were staring down the barrels of loaded arquebuses and bows and really had no way out, but they did have Terumune at sword point. The Date men had the Hatakeyama men in their sights, but they had Terumune. So it was really a no-win situation. But suddenly, Terumune himself broke the standoff, ordering his men to fire, and in the chaos, Terumune was either killed by the Hatakeyama men or cut down in the hail of Date bullets. Regardless, by the time Masamune arrived, his father and all of the Hatakeyama men lay dead. In a rage, Masamune drew his sword and hacked at Yoshitsugu's body and had his corpse hung up in a tree to rot. And so this is the, the most likely and the most reliable account of Terumune's death, but I'll give you another version which comes from later in the Edo period. In this version of the story... Hatakeyama Yoshitsugu corresponded with Date, informing him that he had willfully deserted the Ashina clan, 
and came to Masamune looking for reconciliation, and that he wished to join the Date. Masamune was, of course, skeptical of the sincerity of this statement, and refused to admit the deserter unless they met personally. Apparently, because of this, Yoshitsugu believed that Masamune's plan was to have him killed, so he and his men conferred and developed a plan to abduct either Masamune's father or Masamune's son, to prevent betrayal and strengthen their bargaining position. And so it was said that this was all agreed upon over a cup of sake, and they all swore to follow the plan or die trying. Terumune interceded for Yoshitsugu and treated him with great kindness. Yoshitsugu kept his plot concealed and was invited to dine with Terumune and Masamune. On the following day with some attendants, Yoshitsugu went back to give thanks to the old man. When he rose to go, Terumune went out with him. When the gate was opened, Hatakeyama's men rushed into the castle and bolted the gate, effectively taking the castle. News was sent to Masamune, who had been hunting, and he rushed back. Yoshitsugu and his men negotiated with Masamune from a parapet and brought out Terumune at sword point to show that he was still unharmed. And at this point, Terumune suddenly called out to Masamune, telling him that he wasn't getting out of this alive and is prepared for death, so retake the castle and take revenge on these bastards. Something along those lines. And whenever I think of that, I just can't help but think of that stupid scene from Red Dawn. Boys! Avenge me! Avenge me! So with that, Masamune started the attack, and when the tide of battle turned against Hatakayama, two of the Hatakayama men struck Terumune down. But Masamune did get his revenge, killing every last Hatakeyama soldier in the castle. So I, I think you can see what I'm talking about when I mentioned at the start of this there's a lot of conflicting information. I believe this second version came from the Japanese military histories put together in the late 19th century, which was basically a bunch of legends and propaganda and stories, and what a lot of the very old school histories of Japan that we find in English, like Murdoch and Sansom, were based on to a certain degree. Regardless, it's the Edo period war tales version of the story, and is probably the less likely version of the two. But I have to assume that both of them hold part of the truth. And this is the sort of issue that's really hard to get around, so I just wanted to give you both versions. So, you know, the, the truth probably falls somewhere in the middle anyway, but the more reliable sources seem to indicate that Terumune was kidnapped rather than the Hatakeyama men taking the castle, and that Masamune didn't actually arrive until his father was already dead. So either way, no matter how you cut it, Terumune was dead. And so you also might be wondering, so what happened to Ouchi Saratsuna, the cause of all this mess? Where, where did he go? Did he get killed? What, what's up with, did Masamune get revenge on Ouchi Saratsuna? Well, he fled to the Ashina clan, who he served for the next three years, but in a really massive bit of irony, he was invited back to the Date clan in 1588 on the request of Date Shigezane, and actually went on to serve the Date loyally for the next 22 years until his death. Now let's take a look at this for a second, the, the whole idea of taking on a former enemy as a vassal. You'll remember, in addition to Ochi Saratsuna, Masamune also took back the traitorous Nakano Hisanaka, who betrayed his father. You might be asking, why would one do this? Why would one take back a traitor into your ranks? On the surface, it just seems a terrible idea. Obviously, these guys weren't trustworthy. They've already proven that. Well, I actually have an answer for you. Let, let's pause for a moment and look at the book The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. Which, by the way, is a great book and I highly recommend it. But in this book, and law number two, to be exact, it says the following. Never put too much trust in friends and learn how to use enemies. Be wary of friends. They will betray you more quickly, for they are easily aroused to envy. They also become spoiled and tyrannical. But hire a former enemy and he will be more loyal than a friend, because he has more to prove. In fact, you have more to fear from friends than from enemies. If you have no enemies, find a way to make them. So it actually seems to be a fairly rational concept if you really think about it. The idea here is that a former enemy will have something to prove, and he'll fight to prove his loyalty. And anything that they get out of it is basically a bonus, whereas friends tend to expect a lot and tend to be envious and jealous. I actually came across this when doing research for the Mori Motonari podcast, but I, I didn't have enough information to flesh it out. But apparently Mori Motonari also took on a warrior who was the son of a vassal that had betrayed him, and that warrior actually eventually saved his life in battle. So it looks like it can work out. But I don't really know if this was shrewdness on the part of Masamune, or if it was just opportunistic, or what the specifics of the situation really were. But it worked out. Both Hisanaka and Saratsuna proved their loyalty. 
And of course, the poster boy for making allies out of former enemies is Toyotomi Hideyoshi. He basically built his entire empire by gaining the loyalty of former enemies. So there's a precedent. But anyway, now Masamune finds himself the head of the Date clan at 18 years old, having lost his father, who was his greatest advisor. Masamune was now on his own, with the support of his loyal friends Katakura Kagetsuna, who was 28 years old, Oniniwa Tsunemoto, 36 years old, and his first cousin once removed, gotta be accurate here, Date Shigezane, also 18 years old. And with the betrayal and death of Hatakeyama Yoshitsugu, to paraphrase Game of Thrones, the one-eyed dragon was awakened, and these young warriors were going to war. So let me leave you with the image of the four young warriors standing on a hill staring into the foreboding late autumn sunset, the next generation of young warriors facing an uncertain future, probably have Terumune off to the side looking over them like a Sengoku Anakin Skywalker, and Katakura Kita was probably in there too. So if this was a TV show, that would be the uh, final episode of season one. The four young warriors facing an uncertain future. What happens next? Well, I guess you'll have to stay tuned for next episode. But that's it for this episode. Thank you for listening. Thanks again to the supporters on Patreon. You guys are the ones that are helping me continue to do this. And like I said at the beginning of this episode, if you're not a current supporter on Patreon, go ahead and check out patreon.com slash Samurai Archives and see all the things that we have available. Try to put up bonus audio at least once a month. Got updates and all sorts of other stuff going on over there. And again, if you do have the time and the inclination, please rate and or review on your chosen podcast platform. All right, that is it for this episode. Thanks for listening and catch you next time. Oh, God, 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 oh, God